Please be ready for dictation of exercise number 7 and 8 from Progressive Magazine of June 2023. 5 seconds to go. Sir, I Stop. think this is a very important amendment to the constitution that we are considering and it requires a certain degree of serious attention and serious consideration i would like to make five major points the first point concerns the federal structure of our constitution i remember that it was very wonderful and very nice to hear my old friend colleague somebody with whom i had interacted for more than two decades and somebody with whom i had many a contentious argument and particularly on this issue as well and it was wonderful to hear him once again so welcome back and thank you very much for what you have said but i would have also like to add as a compliment and not to be considered as an offense that he sounds much better from the other side of the house instead of this side of the house so thank you very much for that sir this is an issue on which we have a very serious point article 1 of the constitution of india says india that is bharat is a union of states without the states there is no india and the federal structure of our constitution springs from that concept and therefore the entire structure the federal structure and the rights of the states is something that is absolutely fundamental to the indian constitution it is that constitution because of which all of us are here and are discussing and therefore this issue of a general goods tax services were not included at that point of time when the constitution was being debated what is being talked about was taxes on goods this is not a new concept that has come up now it has been going on in our country at least since the constituent assembly debates the question was whether the states should have the right to have a sales tax let me quote dr ambedkar on this issue in the constituent assembly debates what does he say i quote it seems to me that if we permit the sales tax to be levied by the provinces then the provinces might must be free to adjust the rate of the sales tax to the changing situation of the province and therefore a ceiling from the center would be great handicap in the working of the sales tax as such he continues 
I quote, there are a large number of resources on which the provinces depend has been concentrated in the central list. It is desirable at least to leave one important source of revenue with the provinces. Therefore, I think that the proposal to leave the sales tax in the hands of the provinces from that point of view is a very justifiable thing. This issue has been under debate since then. We introduced the VAT in our wisdom. Much of that has been encroached upon. Now the GST bringing the services also into its ambit along with the goods will virtually take away this right. Now the state governments which were called the provinces then not having any right to raise resources from whatever they would consider they are elected, they consider as important for the welfare of the people in those states that will now be prohibited. How are you going to address this issue? I myself told this to the finance minister and he said that at the time when the GST bill comes, this should be addressed, leaving some flexibility to the states. I will tell you why today you have the Kerala government from where you come, sir, the state has imposed a tax called the health tax. It is on your fast food and all these sorts of food items that increase obesity. It is a very noble thought. It has been welcomed internationally. But such rights will not exist after we enact this amendment and the bill subsequently. Take the case of the state where I come from. A tax has been imposed, a surcharge on cigarettes has been imposed to raise revenue to pay for the victims of the Sharda scam. People are being asked to pay for the victims of the Sharda scam. Whatever be that issue, that is a separate issue. Such rights do not exist in case of national calamities. Are we to reduce the elected state governments where from the people of these states come to the center with a begging ball saying that declare so and so issue as a national disaster and give us certain amount of money. What will be the legitimate rights of the states? And we are the Council of States in this August House. How do we protect that right? That is an important point that needs to be considered. And therefore, I would request the Finance Minister when he replies today to ensure that there is a flexibility 
of this nature whereby the states do not end up actually coming with a begging ball to the center in following years later stop